This is probably the first time in the history of Bitcoin that we have true price discovery. And what I mean by that is this is the first time that anyone who wants to buy it has easy access to buy it. And so, right, baby boomers have $85 trillion of wealth. Their wealth is, for the most part, managed through registered investment advisors who now at least half of them or some, some portion of them can just buy the ETF. And so you're seeing you know, a, a step function in new owners of, of Bitcoin which is driving, I would say, a frenzy in the whole crypto ecosystem, right? So how crypto always works is Bitcoin gets bought and some people sell a little bit to buy Ethereum and they try to play the catch-ups and the altcoins. And I would say we've gotten to very frothy, frothy levels. You can see it in the funding rates of, of the altcoin market, how much you get paid to actually lend out your coins in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and, and all the alts. And so you, you saw it in the equities, the public equity markets, right, MicroStrategy Marathon, all the kind of public equity bellwethers uh, really went parabolic along with Bitcoin. And, and so I wouldn't be surprised to see some correction and some consolidation, but I'm very loath to pick a Bitcoin high because I really do believe this is price discovery. Will we test the old high most likely? Uh, and you'll probably have some consolidation, but I still think we're going to end the year much higher. Today, we delve into the transformative year for Bitcoin, highlighted by its market cap surpassing the $1 trillion mark. This milestone has been propelled by significant inflows into US spot Bitcoin ETFs. However, this resurgence goes beyond mere numbers. It signifies the growing acceptance and integration of Bitcoin into mainstream finance. We'll explore the insights shared by Mike Novogratz and complement them with the latest trends. It's essential to recognize the role of baby boomers' wealth in the seismic shift. With Bitcoin's price reaching new heights and the cryptocurrency market poised for its most substantial monthly rise since October, the engagement of traditional wealth management in crypto becomes even more crucial. We broke out from 45,000, uh, you know, and so that would probably be what should hold us uh, if there's a real correction. You never know why corrections come, something happens and people you know, shift mindset. And there's a lot of people that have bought recently. Uh, I don't think it'll get there, quite frankly. I think if it corrects, it probably collect, co corrects to the mid 50s before taking off to the uh, to the new high. Uh, you know, first the old high, that 68, 69,000, where we got pretty close. And but I do think then you're going to see and partly this is, you know, if you look at Fidelity or any of these big platforms that have so much baby boomer wealth, just shifting two to three percent, one to three percent of those assets, encouraging their customers to shift to Bitcoin over time, which has been an amazing diversifier, is a monster number, right? You think about, it, like I said, 85 trillion of of baby boomer wealth. You know, three percent of that is two and a half trillion, right? The whole market cap of Bitcoin is only a uh, a little more than 1.2 trillion, and so again, we're we're going to see a step change function. We're in the process. Uh, and, and I like to call it price discovery. A good friend mentioned that. I was like, he's dead right. That's what it is. Listen, how do you put yardsticks around something? Right? We know gold is a $12 trillion asset. Bitcoin's about a tenth of a tenth of gold. Uh, could Bitcoin be half of gold at one point? Sure, it could. It will be. And at one point, it will be larger than gold. For every Charlie Munger, God rest his soul, who passes away, that money is finding its way into Gen Z and millennials. And they feel much more comfortable with digital gold than old clunky gold. I'm kind of halfway in between. I like a little of both. I got some gold coins uh, that we give out on our podcast because it's, you know, you can touch it. But but I go to a lot more Bitcoin than I do gold. So what does this mean for the new people getting in? Do you worry at all at this point that a lot of these retail investors in particular are buying at highs? Listen, in every mania, in every excitement, People are going to buy at the wrong level because it feels easy and then they're going to get washed out and they're going to sell at the wrong level and then it's going to go back up and they're going to let's say, I can't believe I sold. Like that's just part of speculation and it's part of investing. You could say the same with NVIDIA or Tesla or anything that, you know, has monster moves. Everyone has FOMO. And so, yes, some investors are going to buy at the wrong level and then stop out at the wrong level. What has been unbelievably impressive about the core Bitcoin community is just how resilient they've been, uh, you know, at 18,000. And the core Bitcoiners just took pain 
And so I don't think the core group of people that have owned this thing and really loved it and promoted it, there are no sellers there. You know, Michael Saylor ain't selling. And the, you know, new people are going to kind of ease in. Listen, I don't think you're buying it into your 401k and selling it a month later. Right. And so most of this new money, I think, is going to be sticky money or hodler money uh, in, in crypto terms. But the retail, you know, the young speculation uh, that's happening on, you know, all the apps and on Robinhood and on on uh, Coinbase and everywhere else, that's going to have blow off tops and blow off bottoms. And, and, and people are going to get chopped up like they always do in speculative manias. There is a tremendous global demand for Bitcoin. And so when you see what's driving the market day to day right now is at eight o'clock at night, all the ETFs talk about how much they bought or sold. And, you know, it was $500 million or $4 million. As long as those numbers stay positive, you're going to see some momentum in Bitcoin. The first day they go negative, people are going to sell off Bitcoin because they think, oh, the ETF funds are going to slow. And so that's that's kind of like the insider's way of looking at this in the short term. But that's a little myopic. You know, let's look each month at what the total flows into Bitcoin is from that ETF community plus other communities. You know, after the halving, that 54 million thing goes to 27 million. I mean, that's 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 a bid ass spread uh, right now. And so there's just not a lot of supply. This is one of the least the least inflationary assets or most deflationary assets there is. It's why, you know, when you see our government spending so much money, people are are drawn to this narrative. Well, there's a tremendous amount of liquidity in the market right now, uh, a shocking amount. I mean, I was looking at just some of the, the, the volumes of the stocks that traded. Forget the ETFs, which traded record volumes, but look at MicroStrategy's volume there, Marathon or Riots. You know, the, the U.S. equity market has monster volume in crypto. You're starting to see it on on the exchanges, you know, and, and uh, the crypto exchanges. And so plenty of liquidity, which means that lots of people are getting leveraged. I think the market is too leveraged right now. It just it, it, it happens after huge runs. You have leverage at the max, at the highs. Thou, there will be a washout. I don't know when it is today, tomorrow, two weeks, a month. It'll be, you know, I hate to call things healthy washouts because it never feels healthy when you lose money. And when there's a washout, the price will go down. But there will be a washout. People can't sustain this much leverage. And remember, a lot of the offshore trading platforms can give you 50, 60, 70 to, to one leverage. And so you got a lot of, you know, millennials and Gen Z YOLOing it. And they will they will get some will make money and a lot of them will get wiped out. Given the run-up we've seen in Bitcoin in and of itself, what do you think about the crypto assets outside of Bitcoin, particularly with the interest you're seeing around Ethereum and the prospect of an Ethereum ETF? Yeah, I, th I think that's the next big question for the community. Will will Ethereum ETF get through? I know it doesn't feel like the SEC is making it easy. You know, the same logic that the Bitcoin ETF got through on, which was there's already a futures ETF. If you believed in that, how dare you not believe in a cash ETF holds for Ethereum. And so my bias is it gets through sometime this year. But we'll see. You know, Gary Gensler has been very careful about not declaring Ethereum not a security. And you can have your own hypothesis, why or why not. I would say it opens the, the gate if one proof of stake, you know, crypto protocol like Ethereum is not a security. Well, what about the next one and the next one and the next one? And so all of a sudden, his argument that these are all securities would probably go out, go out the window. And so I'm sure there's a lot of internal to and fro around this this question. But the reality is we already have an Ethereum futures ETF, and that was the logic that got the Bitcoin ETF approved. And so my bias is it happens.